Cauldrons make their return in Horizon Forbidden West. These are little mini dungeons that you'll complete with parkour challenges as well as maybe some enemies to unlock the ability to either ride or use some of the creatures as companions. I'm going to show you today how to unlock one of the first ones and also get a whole ton of XP and these are great ways to level up but you can see we're going to unlock the scrounger, the scrapper and the grazer as well as some other variants that you'll come across and of course the scrapper too. This will actually be the second cauldron that you should be taking on after the story makes you do the first one. So don't try doing any of the cauldrons until you've completed the very first story one. That story one gives you some information about how to unlock plow horns and others. So you can go and check that out. And as I said, it's pretty much after the first stages of going into the West itself that you'll unlock this. Anywho, let's get back to the MU, that's the one we're taking on today. It's south of Plainsong, or pretty close to where you first really encounter Asylum. It's nestled in the lower mountains, but the entranceway is actually on the lower landscape, so don't do what I did, clamber all over the mountains looking for some sort of entrance. As long as you stay on the lower end, you should find it just by going around the mountain. It's guarded by a couple of scroungers, so you may need to take them out first. But once that's done, you can go ahead and use your override to gain access. I'm not going to go through every single treasure chest in here, keep it to how you want to play. If you want to explore and get every single little bit of loot, then that's up to you. I'm just going to go through the main story beats and give you some tips about taking on the enemies. Some of these can be quite challenging and rough in terms of how to get through them. They are like parkour puzzles, some of them, and they definitely get a lot more complicated. I've completed four of these now. I head through this corridor which you can't really miss and then you get to jump down these wires. This weird little blackout for some reason, that was in game, not my editing I promise. And yeah we go through, definitely inspired by some matrix going on here, really felt like Neo was about to jump out one of his pods. Don't panic either, you don't have to do anything, it will simply take you on rails and you can just drop down when you get a bit closer. There will obviously be machines in here, these are extremely challenging and yes, you will have to complete them before you can leave. So make sure you're well prepared to come in here, there's no way just to go, hey, I'm going to get out of here. So you'd have to reload a previous save if it becomes too hard for you. Now this one's got lots of air vents going on so you can hide in there and they pretty much hide you so you can do lots of stealth assassins. So it's fairly simple to take out some of these early borrowers here. Eventually we will be taking on two hippopotamus style mechs. So you might want to bring any kind of water ammo or based element stuff. So let's take this guy out, finish him off and you can see the actual steam did a good job. You may actually need to shoot some of the steam vents though, they can be closed. So pay attention, look out for them and then they'll give you the opportunity to stay undercover. Let's so go ahead and activate the override just across the way and then we'll be going down the little corridor you can see in the background. Over the bridge and obviously through. We come to a mini junction, although right in front of you is actually blocked by a shield wall. You'll be able to get around that to get the loot chest that's inside. But if you want to go and take a look and see exactly what it is you can. But otherwise, let's go through here and you'll notice it's multi-level. So down below we've got some mushrooms for health and then obviously we're going to be going to the right hand side here through this corridor. Another override to so make sure you do this one and then we're into a large chamber with multiple different enemies and different ways to go. If you head over to the left you should be able to grapple up onto this pillar here and then you can use these to get a lift. Jump on them and they'll take you over. You don't have to worry, they won't react, do anything, make you fall. You can simply just go ahead and land. Well, that's probably a good idea to take the other actual robots out from range a little bit earlier. Although if you're a stealthy assassin like me, you'll be able to get in and quickly get a silent strike in first before taking out the second one. Once that's done, you can go ahead and do the next override and it'll open up the doorway directly in front of you. We've got more of the flying machines, they'll go through as well. We're going to go to the left hand side and just follow the paths over. Although if you really want to go and get some extra resources, then if you actually go through the corridor on the left, that'll bring you to where the force field was and a loot chest. So back to the main chamber and then go ahead on this platform, jump up the vents and then jump to the right hand side and we're going to be taking a leap and using our glider to get across the chasm. Kind of aim for this point as well just in case you don't make it and you should just about clamber up. Go around the pillar and then we're through the corridor on the right hand side. There's a whole bunch of helium berries or mushrooms in these places. Then we go to the left, jump over here again, pretty simple. Follow the small corridor up and we're in the main chamber where we've got these arms. There's some loot that you can go get, but we've basically got to get to the other side using the arms to jump over. 
Be warned, sometimes creatures do sneak up on you. I was getting this supply cache and this bad boy just came through. So once he's dealt with, then we simply need to go up here on the right hand side and wait for the arm to come to us. You won't need to do too much jumping here, just use your actual joystick to move over and you just got to wait and bide your time. Once it gets close enough, you should be able to just get on and then go all the way down. So you really want to stay at the very end of this arm and it eventually will take you to this node that you can hop on two little plimps and then do a jump onto this one. Now there is one of the places that you can activate on the bottom there, which I for some reason didn't go in. I decided to just take this left hand route and there is a small little corridor if you want to be a bit more stealthy. Follow it around and you'll come across this burrow. We're also going to go ahead and fight one of the Amazon crabs in this area too trick with these guys is to stay higher so use the platforms that are around you rather than do what I was doing and fighting him on the ground and then obviously aim for his biggest parts they're lightning based normally so anything shock or lightning will hopefully help do a bit more damage he's pretty tanky so like I said just keep really high and you should be doing all right and just keep obviously aiming for his actual piece if you want to use that as components because remember if you kill him without taking it off generally you won't be able to get any of that loot although be warned he was a bit of a meanie here and he actually ended up destroying the crate trying to attack me once you get him low enough you can go him head with some melee hits and he'll be dead so the main reason I decided to do this guide was because once you killed him in this big massive room there's quite a few different avenues that looked like you could go but it wasn't immediately clear what you should be doing well I decided that yep I would be using these big machines flying through and that's how we was going to get to the next stage. I don't think you're meant to go down there or try and get on top of any of them arms. So yeah, go to this spot, see all the Neo stuff going down below you and turn around and go to the left. There will be an override that you need to activate. Once it's done, it'll open up a drawbridge and then you'll be able to go across. And we're effectively going to go back almost to the start. I'm going to try and jump on top of one of the flying machines and it will take us all the way through. There may be another way that you can get on top of them to get through that area, but this is the way that I did it. So I jumped on from this platform onto the next as soon as that arm came over to me and then just followed the arms all the way through back to the beginning. I'm not going to do any cuts now though, just to show you guys because I know I have a habit sometimes of jumping forward a little bit, but this bit's pretty important. You see an arm going below you, and you can pretty much hop onto that. Again, you don't have to do too much mad jumping, and then you simply just need to stay on the end of this one and let it swing you all the way back round. Eventually, it will bring you over to this point, and then you can go ahead and jump on top of these vents here. All right, one little cut, and then jump up, and then keep going climbing, and we're gonna go to the right-hand side. Once you're up, you then be able to go onto this plinth and you should be able to jump over onto one of the flying machines as it comes by. Ride it all the way through and you can drop down at this stage here. There's a breakable glass window on this side. This is where we're going to go next. Although it does only actually lead you to a little cache. Once you've got it, come back outside and then we go over again to the left hand side to this little platform and we're going to jump onto this hand. Now these ones are a little bit different, you're not going to be running up the arm of this one, you just simply need to get onto the two little prongs here and then eventually we will make it onto that second arm and start running up. You can see definitely the matrix influence here for sure as all the machines are doing their business. So now you should be able to go across, you might need to do a little jump there and then run up the arm and climb onto this spot here. Once you do that, obviously go to the left hand side, it's pretty clear, it's pretty easy, it's much nicer climbing through these actual dungeons sometimes than some of the rock faces where you have to constantly use your focus. Keep shimmying all the way along and we'll actually go around the corner a little bit here and we are going to need to drop down onto one of the arms below us. It's not too difficult, just wait for it to happen and that's it, you can drop down. Follow the arms super quick and you might just about make it, otherwise wait for them to come round. And again do the same business just wait for the arm to come over and eventually it will and then you can go across to it you don't need to run up the arm either again again just on these little pillars here waiting for your moment and we're going to be jumping over onto another machine that's going to come by so don't go into that area that's where the machines come out you need to wait or bide your time just a little bit more and eventually one of the machines will come round Again, it's not super obvious what you're meant to do here, and yeah, so don't panic, don't try jumping across anything that you shouldn't. Just wait for the timing to turn right, and you want to try and get onto the back of this one. 
and then again just ride it all the way over to the safe part. Hop down and head to the left and then onto this platform and then go ahead and just do a simple jump onto the next ledge and then go over and do the override. We'll come into the final encounter and this is where we're going to face off against the hippopotamus style machines. I already had some experience taking care of these as I completed one of the side quests to get one of the Q, I think it is bows or sharpshooter bows, but I made a bit of a pig's ear of this. There's definitely a case for knowing to shoot their little purple little nodes here that helps take away some of their damage points and just running around as much as possible keeping away from their suction. They'll basically open up their mouth and try and draw you in and then they end up releasing that in water damage. So yeah, I definitely could have done a better job at trying to ping off some of these pieces instead of using my lightning arrows. Although there are definitely some lightning weaknesses or elemental damages to lightning you can use against them. It was definitely, I think it was the water I should have been using. So if you've got any water traps or any weapons that actually have the water element, that might be a good way to weaken them before going in and doing some melee damage. But eventually I whittled them all down and I finally got the blow for the last one. And that is it, you can do the override and you'll get access to a whole bunch of machines now. And yes, I've just remembered seeing it on screen that they're called Wide Moors. Do the override and as I said, you get access to a whole bunch of the starting creatures and a nice little trophy too. I do notice that some of these really don't have much time when you've actually overridden them. It's only the mounted ones that tend to stay a long time. You can see there the Grazer, the Scrapper, the Borrower and the scrounger all there as well as the fanghorn and of course the wide moor that we just fought but certainly useful for coming across them creatures and causing a bit of carnage and that is the cauldron mu done three skill points 8000 xp they're totally worth doing even if they do take quite a while or can be a bit of a challenge you can see i ranked up to level 15 even though it was a level 18 activity so you definitely can do it a bit earlier than you might think Next one after this is level 22, so we'll take care of that in the next video. And you've definitely got a little scrounger that you can go and tame outside and it'll help protect you for a minute just to show you exactly how to utilize them. For sure they can help take out components from other machines or just be a bit of a nuisance while you do more of the heavy work. But like I said, they don't last long, the scroungers here. This one without any buffs in your skill tree will only last maybe barely a minute and a half. But there we go, the MU Cauldron done. Enjoy the rest of my content and guides that I've got incoming. And if you've got any questions or queries, leave them in the comment section. Until next time, I'll catch you later.